everyone, this is Tori and I am here with a fun art journaling tutorial that is fun for spring and has lots of flowers in it. Here I'm working in a black art journal, like a black paved one, and the stencils I'm using here are the um, deconstructed cabbage rose and deconstructed double zinnia ones by Tracy Bautista. I love these ones. I like anything that's messy looking essentially. And I mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> uh, so I'm just using a cosmetic sponge and white gesso to stencil um, these flowers down on the background. And this um, journal actually is an old photo album. It's one of those sort of older ones where you would use the photo corners um, to tack down your photos in and maybe scrapbook in them a little bit. Um, I acquired it from a friend during a sort of a craft trade. She had it kicking around and didn't want it anymore. So I took it because I'd been eyeing up the moleskin black page journals and this was a free alternative. And I love it. Love it. Love working in a black journal. If you haven't tried it, do it. Um, these flowers here I'm stenciling are the uh, woodcut roses by um, Desiree Havicht. I hope I said that right. And I'm just drying everything with a heat gun because I'm impatient. And I hate waiting for stuff to dry. And so um, going into this page, I had no plans. All I did was sort of pull out a bunch of, of my stencils that were florals that I liked and figured I was going to do something flower themed. So here I'm putting out my paints. Um, I've chosen the Liquitex Basic Prism Rose, sorry, Prism Violet medium magenta and then the artist loft light violet and then I've got Liquitex soft body phthalo blue and the Liquitex basics um, light blue permanent or light permanent blue and so now as I'm working through my page I'm just mixing the colors as I'm applying them to the page I kind of like seeing the variation and the different colors sort of bump up against each other and intermingle so I'm just intuitively going around and adding the colors as I see fit. Mm, I've decided to add some matte medium to two of my colors because they're uh, more opaque which is good but in here I wanted them to be a bit transparent because I wanted those black lines from the page underneath the stencils to show through and I was worried that they were going to be too opaque that you wouldn't be able to see it so I added the matte medium to make the paints more translucent. So I'm just going through all my flowers here and adding details. Oh, and you can see here I've added too much to that flower. So I'm using a baby wipe to clean up and blend. And now I've added some quinacridone magenta to my palette to, you know, add some more pink hues to the page. Again, I'm just intuitively layering it and blending it and adding and you know finger painting until I'm happy with it. I'm going back with a, uh, some more of the darker shades to add a bit of detail to those smaller flowers, add some value to it. Nothing really detailed. And now I'm going to go in and add some detail into those petals. And so I've pulled out, I think it's Liquitex Basic, Light Permanent Green and Bright Aqua Green. So yeah, I'm just going back over those again to add um, some details. So if you ever work on black uh, canvas, black paper, whatever, a black art journal, this is a really great way to have your colors pop on a page because a lot of these paints don't really show up on black paint as well. So um, stenciling or painting over in white gesso first and then going back over with your preferred paint colors, it's a great way to have them stand out on that black background. And again, I'm just intuitively adding stuff. Oh, and this I'm using gesso to fill in the background here. I've decided that I'm gonna fill it all in and do a messy job so I can go back with some other colors. I don't paint very <laughs> exactly so I'm just sort of slapping it on there. I'm trying to get as much of that black covered as I can 
and using a baby wipe to blend things so it's not quite so abrupt. I hope I'm not the only one who paints this messy. <laughs> I hope not. Surely there's got to be other messy painters out there. Nothing I do is very exact. So, but I like it that way, so that's good. So again, I'm just filling everything in here. At this point, I still don't know what I want to do. I just know that I don't want it to be on a black background, that I want more color to the page. And as you can see, I'm, I'm doing a very messy layer of gesso, but I'm also not worried about how thick it's going on. Some spots are thicker than others. I'm just adding some detail to those um, stencils because the stencil itself has um, a center to the flower with some, uh, I think they're called stamen technically. Is that the first, the official word for what those little things are in flowers? <laughs> Can you tell I'm not a, a gardener at all? <laughs> but I'm just drying everything with a heat gun uh, to get it dry to apply the next element. And at this point I decided I wanted some contrast so I'm going to use some neon yellow or fluorescent yellow on top of that gesso to add a you know a pop to it add some highlight um, neons are something I use in oh gosh almost every single page that I create <laughs> I'm addicted to them I love it I love how bright and vibrant they are and they just add a punch to every page I love it so I'm just using my fingers here so that it blends really easily because I don't want a really thick layer I want like a nice thin layer and I want it to blend sort of organically. So I like the way this page is shaping up at this point. Still not really sure where it's going, but I like it, which I mean is good, right? And it looks like I pulled out my Jane Davenport mermaid markers to go and add some more layers to it. These markers are amazing. If you don't have a set, please get a set. I know they're hard to find. <laughs> it took me weeks of stocking my local Michaels to get a set, but it was worth it. These, they're amazing. They're a great watercolor ink, I guess is the best way to describe them. And I love using them on almost every single spread I do. They're a great way to do exactly what I'm doing here, which is just adding um, transparent layers of color and just really select spots. And I love watercolors, but for whatever reason, pulling out my watercolor sets just seems like such a pain in the butt. And using these pens is such an easy way to get that watercolor effect in some areas without having to pull out your watercolors. So, again, I'm just going back in different areas and wherever I think needs a bit of color, I'm adding it. I quite like this um, sort of turquoise shade over top of the neon. This part is part where my camera decided to turn off stop recording so um, in between those two bits all I did was stencil on some more flower images and this is the the Bali Love set by uh, Flora Boli I decided to go back with gesso and stencil over those uh, flower images and now I'm going back in with a Stabilo All pencil and adding details just you know more color more layers to everything these Stabilo All Pencils are awesome too. I think I have them in every color. I love using them to sort of do exactly what I'm doing here to highlight different spots and um, add detail work essentially. Again, I'm going to go back over this flower. I decided to use the black one, the black pencil, and as you can see, it was too dark. You couldn't see the difference between the edge of the stencil anymore and where I'd added the black pencil so I try to take away some of it with a paper towel <laughs> try to lighten it a little bit I want to do is still be able to see that there was like a stenciled edge and that it wasn't just black all pencil so this is a China marker again I'm just scribbling with reckless abandon at this point on the page um, I love adding sort of that chaotic look to my pages and so this is a great way to sort of add detail that's not really very purposeful but it adds 
visual interest. Again, this is a it's a white china marker, and I'm going back over and adding some marks to my page wherever I want, kind of all over to make sure it's balanced. Now I'm adding some more paint. This is, I believe it's Windsor G Galleria in permanent rose. And so I'm adding some to this uh, flower shape. This paint is sort of hit and miss in the fact that it, this, because it's not a professional quality, it's not very um, opaque, which if you're looking for like a really bright, opaque paint, this is not the one you want. However, it's great for adding um, lots of layers where it's transparent and sheer so you don't have to water it down or thin it out It's great the way it is out of the tube, which in this case it was perfect for and now I'm going over with my Uniball Signo broad gel pen in white and just adding detail to those um, stenciled woodcut roses Because they needed some love. I hadn't paid any attention to them. So Just gone over their shapes to sort of make them stand out a bit more and I think at this point I'm just trying to decide what I'm doing, which I still don't really know. <laughs> I've grabbed a black pen here, I think it's a paper meat flare, and I'm just adding some details to this uh, flower. I guess it's a seed pod. And then just going back in with my uh, china marker and adding some more details. I think most people work this way, but I like to start with big, large, messy, broad point colors and strokes, and then as I get further to the end of my page, there's more and more detail work in it. I'm going back over those flowers with a uh, Moonlight Jelly Roll pen in green, again, to add some detail to those flowers. And I believe I'm adding some more with a neon yellow gel pen here. And as we get to the end of this, um, you'll actually see that after I finished recording, I went back and added more detail to my flower images. Once I was done recording, I decided I wasn't really happy with what they looked like, and so I added some more detail in black pen and other stuff. And so the final images look a little different than the end of this video. This, I'm going back in with the mermaid markers here to add some more color to that uh, flower at the bottom there. I believe this shade is... Wow. It's either coral or starfish. I want to say it's coral. And then this is, I believe, the deep sea color, which is this sort of smoky purple is the best way I could describe it. I really like it. I think at this point I'm feeling like it's pretty much done. And so I decided to go back in with my Posca paint marker. These markers are great too. I have them in different sizes, all different colors, and um, I've gone back in and just again added some more mark making and details just to add some visual interest in the page. I think at this point I decide it's done for now. So you can see all the detail in here. And it's just a really bright, fun, happy page. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. And hopefully I'll be back soon with another tutorial for you.